Okay, YouTube friends, let's get started making this uh, beef vegetable soup that I'm making tonight. Uh, let me preface this with this is not Brunswick stew, okay? this That's just what my family always called it, but that's really not what it is. Um, it's, it's really a, a very good soup, but it is not Brunswick stew. I looked up the recipe for actual Brunswick stew. And this is not it. But it is very good and very comparable to Brunswick stew. So let's get started and I'm going to show you what we're going to need. First we're going to need about three quarters of a cup of flour. We're going to need about three quarters of a cup of oil to brown our meat in. We'll need our pound of stew meat. I have two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes a can of whole kernel corn, a can of black-eyed peas, and a can of lima beans, green lima beans. Then we're going to add some salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic salt, and that is going to be our soup. But I'm going to show you how we put it together because there's a little bit of difference in what we do to make this soup than, than, what, we, than what you normally would. So let me get everything set up and we'll get started. Whoops, I forgot to tell you about two ingredients. I forgot about my frozen vegetables that I have. Just the old-fashioned vegetable soup vegetables. It's got a little bit of everything in there. It's got some potatoes and some green beans and some more of uh, some celery, I believe. And then we're also going to need a chopped onion, a chopped sweet onion. So let's add that to our, uh, our list. Okay, folks, I've got about three quarters of a cup of oil over here in my skillet. And I'm going to cover that up and let that heat up while I am coating my meat. I've got about three quarters of a cup of flour in my plastic bag here. And I'm just going to open up my stew meat. And I'm going to drop it in there by the handful. And then we're just going to seal it up. Throw that away. That's kind of gross. And we're just going to shake it up in our bag here until we've got everything nice and coated. And then we're going to save that flour because we're going to need it. It is going to come into play. And there, our meat is nice and coated in the bag. And whoops, we'll just leave it sitting there until we get ready to put it in our oil. Our oil's not quite hot yet. So, as soon as it gets hot, we'll put it in the pan, we'll brown it, and I'll show you what it looks like before I take it out. Okay, we've got our beef in the pan now, and it is browning up. And we're just going to let that cook really good. You can see we've dropped some flour in the pan. You can tell by the color of the grease now that the flour has gotten some of it has gotten off of the meat and is actually in the grease now. But we're still going to, we're going to need this because we're going to make a new French mother sauce. It is called sauce velouté. I had no idea that there was such a thing until um, a few years ago. I looked at what it was because I knew I was making a roux, which is how all of the French mother sauces begin. But uh, I did not know what it was called. When you add vegetable stock to your roux, it becomes what is known as a sauce velouté. So I'll show you when we get there. But uh, we're going to let this cook, get all that blood out of there, and uh, get it nice and brown on the outside. And then we're just going to put it, move it to a pan, move it to a plate with some paper towels, and let it drain real quick. And then we're going to put it into our into our crock pot. Okay, we are ready to take our meat out of the pan. We're just going to put it over here on this plate and let it drain a little bit before I put it in my crock pot. 
Now, this meat is safe to eat at this point, but remember, this is stew beans. So if you tried to bite into it right now, you would probably pull your teeth out of your head trying to trying to break it off because it's going to be tough at this point. It is not a fast cooking meat and it is meant to sit in that liquid for a while and soften up. So that's what we're going to let it do once we get ready to get our crock pot started. We're going to give it about six hours in that crock pot on low to uh, get nice and tender. Alright, we've got all that out now. Now, you see we've still got a good bit of oil left in the pan. We've got some drippings from the meat that cooked out in there too. Uh, so... We're going to start by putting the rest of our flour into the pan. Now, this should start beginning. This should become our, this is what becomes our roux. And we may actually have to add just a little bit of flour to that, but we're going to wait and see if we do. Eyeball it. That's what I call it. Alright, that's looking like it's not going to be too bad. So we're just going to let that flour cook. And this is what takes the longest time of the recipe. You want to cook that flour until you have a nice golden brown roux. You don't want a milky white roux like you use for your bachamel, for your macaroni and cheese. You want it to be nice and golden brown. So we're going to be sitting here stirring for a long time. And I, when it's over with, I'll let you know exactly how many. I'm not going to force you to sit there and watch me stir for 10 or 15 minutes or however long it takes. But I will tell you exactly how long that, um, how much time elapsed uh, while I stir this. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off now and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to add my vegetable stock. And at that point it will become a sauce balute. So we'll be right back. Look, we left a little piece of meat in there. Let's get him out. Okay, I'll be back. We're going to stand here and stir. Let's see. Looks like seven minutes has elapsed since I started on this roux, and I'm ready to start adding some stuff. First, I'm going to add some salt, and I'm going to add a good bit of salt, probably a tablespoon. Then, we're going to add some garlic salt, and not quite as heavy on that, maybe a half a tablespoon, maybe a teaspoon. And there we go. And then... Can't forget to stir. So you see how brown that has gotten? That is a good roux for this soup. And we're going to add some pepper, probably a tablespoon. Well, not probably not even a tablespoon, probably a teaspoon of pepper. And now we're ready to start adding our vegetable stock to form our sauce velouté. So I have all that juice over here in a bowl that I've collected, and I don't know how I'm going to do this with one hand. Let's see if we can do it this way. There we go. I want to stir, stir, stir. I want to keep it thick. You see how it's thickening up as I pour it in there? Keep it thick. And it's a nice dark muddy red color. Just like the color of Alabama red mud clay. And keep on stirring. See how nice and thick that is? I mean, that's not a thin sauce. 
We're going to keep letting it, let it thicken up in between adding the, so, the, uh, the vegetable stock. A little more. Let it thicken till we've used all of our vegetable stock that we had out of those cans of vegetables. Keep on adding it. <clears throat> And that is making a very pretty sauce right now. Let that thicken up just a little more and we'll add the rest of this. Actually, I could probably go ahead and put a smidgen of that in there. Now I want to give it some time here to thicken back it up before we put the last of it in there. Although it's still looking pretty good. It's not it's not thin yet. And then we are going to add some water to our crock pot. Uh, one of those tomato cans should be plenty. One of those big 28 ounce tomato cans of water should be more than enough. That is looking really nice and smooth. Very good. Thickness is good. Uh, I'm going to add the rest of my sauce in here. I mean, the rest of my, <coughs> excuse me, broth. And that takes care of all of the broth. And we're just going to let that thicken up just a smidgen more before we pour it into our crock pot. And then I'll show you what everything looks like when it's all put together. We're going to let it cook overnight. Well, we're going to let it cook for six hours. I'm going to have to set my alarm to get up and turn it off. <laughs> so hang on and we'll be back. Okay, you can see I have replaced my cooktop with my crock pot and we've got our meat in there we've got our onion we've got our frozen vegetables we've got all of our cans of vegetables and now we are ready to pour in our sauce velouté set that over there and just going to pour it in slowly and scrape all that out of there. see what we come up with and like I said we're probably gonna need about well I don't know we may need yeah we're gonna need some we're gonna need some water so my measuring cup is gonna be my can that I used for my that, that my tomatoes came out of now I have filled that all the way to the brim but I'm probably only gonna use about half of it Maybe not even that much. We're going to look and see what this needs. Because some juice is still going to cook out of those vegetables as it cooks in the crock pot. I'm going to add just a little more. So, yeah, about half of that can is what we wind up using. So, maybe 14 ounces of liquid, 12 ounces maybe. And we're going to hit it one more time. 
with a little salt, maybe a little garlic salt this time, because I didn't use a whole lot long ago. Give it a little more garlic salt and a tiny bit more pepper. We're not going to add any hot sauce to this yet. I'm going to let each person do that to their own bowl individually. Uh, this is really good with some hot sauce on it. And give it one more quick stir. And we are ready to put the lid on. We're going to let this cook on low for six hours. And it should be ready to eat. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, here it is, folks. It is done, finished through. We've got our all of our yummy vegetables in there. And our stew beef. Let's find a piece of that stew beef and pull it over here to the side real quick. And like I told you, that stuff is going to be tough until you put it in the pot and let it cook for a while and now look how tender it is it is just falling apart so that is how you make my dad's soup and see it even it looks like Brunswick stew it has a shares a lot of the flavor of Brunswick stew but it is not actually Brunswick stew. So, I hope you have enjoyed my little video. And if you make this, let me know how you like it in the comments. And we'll see you next time on CRRV.